Here we go again. We're on the road to Boston to catch a flight to the Azores, back to the boat after a successful couple months almost month back. And a half, yeah, yeah, month and a half back in the, the US in Baltimore. It was really good for us to stay back and work and earn some money. We were able to spend a lot of time with our families, which was really nice. So since we take Azores Airline, they are super cheap, but they only stop in Boston. So we do have to rent a car drive to Boston to catch our flight because it is cheaper than actually taking a plane to Boston. Anywhere we can save some money, we do. <laughs> Attention rental car customers. Rental car, please return. We got here super early only to find out that we had to wait three and a half hours before the Azorian Airlines people got here to check us in. So... We were a little worried this would take a long time because of the government shutdown, but it's not too bad. the first coat of paint on. How exciting. We really expected it to be gray. First coat of paint. Yay. So it's, it's really good to be back on the boat. It's, it's a little like bittersweet like gorgeous to see it partially painted but it's not completely painted and the inside is a wreck so, <laughs> so it's like yay we're back and we have a ton of work to do it's really funny because we came from like eight degrees fahrenheit and we i mean it is so warm here but everybody's in their like winter jackets <laughs> it's like 65 degrees our first order of business is actually to right away go to the CEF agent because we need to sort out all the stuff with our visas now that we are actually in Portugal. And we need to let them know that we started the whole process with the embassy in DC so that we don't get deported. running in the US. We don't have to do anything here. If we don't get the visa within 90 days, we need to then apply for an extended tourist visa. Which is another 90 day extension. Yeah, so yeah. that's going to be fine. Um, and that is a load off our shoulders. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's so hard to come back to it looking like this, but at least we know that now we can really start making a dent in this work and hopefully the boat will be more livable very soon. Okay, as we've mentioned before, it's super wet and moist here in the Azores, and it's led to some really disgusting things that we have found in our boat uh, since we left, and it's disturbing. Ugh. Those are dead bugs. That is all I have to say. Really nasty, and it's all over the boat. And even on our sheets, all these blotches and our pillows were unbelievable. So I just threw them outside. Okay, so th this is just really gross. Uh, the plan before we go back in the water, and this is a hopeful plan if we have time, is to revarnish the entire interior of the boat. Because if you look at the wood, the areas where the varnish gets rubbed off on corners is where the mold is growing out of. All 
All right, so that was thoroughly disgusting. Uh, now I'm gonna go do some more disgusting work, but planned disgusting work, not the unplanned variety. This is the bulkhead. It's all in need of some serious repair. So the plan here is to glass in new bulkhead and scarf in the repair. So what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna use, instead of plywood, we're gonna use three quarter inch foam. That way, being how it's down by where the shower is gonna be again, we don't want it getting waterlogged, wet, and rotting. When I pack, then foam coring, because I'm weird. And this is what my luggage was. So the rotten wood in the bulkhead, I cut it all out and we've just left it open to dry. The wood that was damp but not rotten yet got to stay. It dried out and it's, it's sound. So all we're gonna do now is patch the area. Now we could patch the area with new plywood that could rot once again. Instead, what I'm gonna do is patch it with foam coring material. So the bulkhead is made out of two layers of three quarter inch plywood. I've simply cut it back in a way that I'm able to scarf it in and layer it back up in three quarter inch panels of foam coring. And we're just gonna put chop strand mat between them to kind of tie it all together and, and make it really solid. So first things first, we gotta sand the rest of the paint away that we have plenty of area to tab the fiberglass, the chop strand mat onto. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the foam boards that I've cut all these pieces of, and then we're gonna cover them with fiberglass, the chop strand mat. Then we're gonna wet everything, and then we're gonna smoosh it all in there, smoosh it all together, bandage up the bottom of the board, of the bucket. So the idea is that instead of just being like a butt joint where one piece directly meets the next piece, it's not a very strong junction. This is going to be stepped. So to have a nice wide shoulder to help bond everything, and the glass is gonna be tabbed onto the bulkhead. I made the bed, so no more mold and mildew, and at least there's one surface of the boat that isn't covered in crap. That took forever, in a very uncomfortable position, which is typically how boat work goes. One of our more exciting Christmas presents was a backpack. So it's a super nice backpack for like hiking and stuff so we can carry all our camera gear and iPads and everything and it's just way, way better than what we were doing before. <laughs> we missed this food. <laughs> This is a wreck and an absolute mess, <laughs> and we need some space. So these are all fixings and moldings from inside the head. So we do need to keep these somewhere. <laughs> Under all this, we have this project I was working on, which was the idea to create uh, another drag box on the bow, up in the forepeak, that way we get airflow into the foot of the V-berth. It's a noble idea, but it's a horrible idea. <laughs> this thing is huge. When we really need it is when we're anchored and sleeping and there's no airflow up there and it's stuffy in the hot clim climates. So we'll just have a cow mounted on a tall pipe so it'll be a snorkel and that's it. Then when we go sailing, we don't need a giant drag box because it's not there. We just take it off, cover the hole, good to go. This whole time I've been fighting against this project because when we put the dummy Durad box up on the bow, it was so clunky and huge. We came up with this idea that's way better and means that we can just throw this thing away. Good morning, everyone. So, it's Sunday here. We've worked really hard since we got here. We've done a whole bunch of progress in the head. So now it's time to take a day to relax. So Scott's on his way to pick us up and then we're gonna go hang out with them all day. Today is our break day, and it's also our fun day with uh, Scott and Grasa and family, and so we're gonna be just exploring a little bit. Of course, the sun decided to just go away, but it's Tessera, so. <laughs> Which means it'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> I'm here again. 
So behind me you can see Split Rock, Monte Brasil, uh, St. George and Pico. It's a pretty cool view. Going to see an old port. And there's a little trail to get there. Azorian fashion. It's raining, <laughs> but just a little mist. It's like a thick mist though, the kind that drenches you instantly. <laughs> you run away, this is the day I will be honest. I'm afraid to lose myself, spy your stories on Snapchat. And you break me down, when the light is gone. So the tour guide was explaining to us that to make this thing as foolproof and not breaking as possible, it actually floats on a pool of mercury. <laughs> which is the liquid metal from the black line all the way down it's all mercury above that is a pool of oil that keeps all the gears and everything lubricated so it just it can't fail because it's a lighthouse and you need it to always work <laughs> We we're trying to figure out what we're gonna do for the drain in the head. And we we're thinking of like a trough system where like you have the shower floor and then troughs on each side. You were thinking of that. I was thinking of that, yes. Maddie saw this giant tile, which then is also a big lid that you can lift up to get access to the bilge area. So we're just gonna set this at the bottom and then have the sides of the shower kind of curved down to this thing. And then the pump simply be mounted under this. So this will be the floor for the head. And then we're ordering the sink. We're back here in our favorite restaurant, Quinta Doge. So it is. Uh, so, yeah, Quinta Doge. Uh, is it Doge? We've had a very successful day. We, very productive day. Yes, we ordered our sink. We saw some beautiful things. We got the floor for our shower. And we're just feeling really good about things right now. So even our break day was productive. Very productive. <laughs> get to try beer that is not super buck and this is actually brewed in Tercera. This is Brianda, the girl who helped fight, oh gosh, you have to help me with the story. She was, okay, so she helped to defend against the Spaniards by sending bulls down a hill. <laughs> she's a, she's a hero, a local hero of Tercera. So I'm excited to try it. It's actually really good. It's delicious. I highly recommend. Well, we've been waiting for this day for a long time. <laughs> These deer look really different. They kind of look... They almost look goat-like. Yeah. Okay, so we have everything stripped out of here. 
Book your next adventure with Travel GNU, a website that makes it easy to book hotels, rental cars, and tours anywhere in the world. Find the link for Travel GNU in the description of this video. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.